Welcome everyone to the new Fly Fisher. I'm your host, Rebecca Red, and I'm in Labrador, and I'm fishing for multiple species. Let me introduce you to one of my guests. Come here, sweetheart. Beautiful landlocked salmon right there. Much more on this episode. Stay tuned. The new Fly Fisher has been made possible thanks to Newfoundland and Labrador Outfitters Association, Orvis Sporting Traditions, Scientific Anglers, Able Reels, Ross Reels, Superfly, Fly Fishing for Everyone. There are few angling destinations in the world that rival Newfoundland and Labrador. Whether you're fishing for Atlantic salmon, record-breaking landlocked salmon, trophy brook trout, northern pike, whitefish, or large arctic char, you've come to the right place. Here you'll find pristine rivers set against a rugged landscape, plenty of breathing room, and an abundance of trophy-sized fish. This is the reason we have chosen Riverkeep Lodge in Western Labrador, located 100 miles east of Labrador City, along the shorelines of the magnificent Anaconac River. Accessible only by floatplain, this remote, pristine location ensures a true wilderness experience. My guide for this week is Kier Lamar, one of the best in the business, friendly, knowledgeable, and a great guy to be around. The host and owner of the lodge is Steve Murray. With Steve, you arrive as a guest, but you leave as a friend. these two seams coming around the rock here. So you get a bit of a back eddy action in between the two seams, and you've got a back eddy action on this side of the seam as well. Okay. So what the trout will do is they'll sit in there. Sometimes they'll even sit backwards to the given current because the back eddy is just keeps bringing them food. So we're trying to get our fly right into the center of those back eddies. bang off on the rocks. Look at that. What an acrobatic show. You gotta love them salmon. That is fantastic. <laughs> ah. That was, oh. Uh, it looks like he's right on the, the white uh, zonker. That old woolly bugger, yeah. Woolly that, bugger uh, zonker. That woolly buggers there are just, they're the fly for here. Look at the colors on this fish. Oh my goodness. So. You want me to walk back? No, you should be good right here, actually. We're just in the lee of this rock that you're standing on. And give him a couple of seconds. All righty. Put in the water, let him breathe. I'm gonna just reel in here. 
And uh, so this is, what's the other name that you call these landlocks? Winnemish is what we call them locally. Um, High and beautiful. In some places, they're actually considered a nuisance because they're such big, heavy eaters, they can impact the, the other fisheries, such as the trout fisheries in the area. <laughs> well, I want to let you know, this is my very first Winnemish, a landlock salmon. So we try to keep these guys in the water because they are very sensitive. Mm. And every fish in, uh, in this place is a precious animal and yes. a precious resource. Off he goes. Go. Thank you. Thank you. Not a problem. That Congratulations. Awesome. Way to go. Yeah. Beautiful. There are five different species available at Rivercape to angle for. By far the most exciting is the landlocked salmon. What is the difference between migratory Atlantic salmon and a landlocked Atlantic salmon? From a taxonomy perspective, there's actually no major difference between Atlantics and landlocked Atlantic salmon, which are sometimes called one a niche. They are the same species, although there are some genetic differences. The relationship of the two is similar to that of the rainbow trout and steelhead, in which life history and behavior rather than genetics distinguish the two. A world record landlocked salmon, all 22 pounds, 11 ounces of it, was caught in Labrador in the Smallwood Reservoir. The Wananish are lightning fast swimmers and acrobatic jumpers, so prepare yourself for some excitement. Now, with brook trout and landlock being in the same water, don't they like the different size of the rocks, like the opposites? Absolutely. Uh, not a lot of people realize that uh, ahead of the rock, there's a pressure wave. Uh, so that's typically where you'll see the salmon. Yep. Um, and where the water is rippling around the rock, in yep. front is where you'll see the salmon. Um, and then typically where the water is riffling around the rock, you're getting that high oxygenation in the water, and the trout will actually sit in behind them. <laughs> uh, so we'll catch a salmon in front, and you'll catch a trout behind. That is awesome. It's a win-win situation. Win-win. <laughs> Especially with winning it. It's in their name. That's right. <laughs> On the advice of Kier, I changed over to a Goddard caddis dry fly and used a skittering technique. It's done by simply raising the tip of the rod and dragging the fly across the surface. This imitates a recently hatched caddis attempting to fly off the surface. Got him! Awesome! Woohoo! Oh my goodness! <laughs> Oh, look at that. Wow. Salmon on a dry fly. That was fantastic. Boy, do I ever have a good view from up here. So here we were just casting across, skittering this little dry fly, right exactly as I was skittering it and just stopped, he took it. Yeah, and they'll usually take it either right after you've stopped it or right when you're about to start the skitter again. They're very opportunistic. Yeah, you were just telling me that. Yeah. So here, woo! Woohoo! Beautiful. Beauty. Yes. <laughs> oh, you fantastic little fish, you. There we go. Perfect. Nothing to it. That was perfect. And you only just had him, eh? Yeah. Right in the, just the corner of <laughs> I, his mouth there. Absolutely. Well, we're going to let this one go. And we've kept it in the water, so there's really very little stress mm -hmm. to this fish. Which is really important to the continuation of the species. Absolutely. Yeah. Conservation. Exactly. And we're gonna let her go. Thank you, sweetheart. Bye bye. Nice. Oh, fish on. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, it's a 
heavy fish. No way. I'm gonna go ahead and say that looks like a trout to me. Wow. Oh, he's putting a lot of pressure on this six weight. That's a nice big trout. That was really. That's great. Oh, there we go. Beautiful. Right on. Nothing to it. Look at that. That is a beautiful brook trout. Little River Keep Lodge gift. Look at that. Wow. Turn him in to the current. There he goes. There he goes. Way yeah. to go. There you go. Yeah. Salmon in a brook trout. Yeah, that's fantastic. Perfect. And this is like dry fly fishing. It is. And in it's in fall. <laughs> it, it is, and it's bizarre that we're getting them, because usually this time of year we are fishing wet flies. To fish a dry fly like this later on in the season is pretty strange. Yeah, but this is a treat. It is This a treat. is an absolute yeah. treat. Getting these fall run uh, brook trout on a dry fly, gotta love it. Yeah. Uh, here at Riverkeep Lodge, we can accommodate uh, eight guests per week. Um, it's one guide per two guests. So you uh, have two folks in a boat, uh, go up river or down river, and uh, we have a cabin that sleeps six. And uh, we also have a separate cabin uh, for couples that uh, sleeps two. And uh, each one has its own bathroom facilities, hot shower, everything in its own cabin. The fishing here at Riverkeep is uh, first part of the season. The land locks are in the river. Uh, there's quite a few of them. The lake trout tend to be in the river too. Uh, then as the water warms up, the brook trout start, the hatches start, which is July. Uh, all of July is great dry fly fishing. Um, August is more like streamer fishing where you blow surface and then uh, towards the end of the season, into September, uh, you've got the brook trout and the landlocks coming back in to spawn, and uh, you can catch them both on dries and subsurface. When coming to Riverkeep Lodge, you are truly in the wilderness, and your chances of spotting local wildlife is very high. Many guests report sightings of caribou, moose, black bear, otters, and birds of prey such as bald eagles and osprey. Make sure you have your camera at all times to record those special moments. So you recommend a sinking line for this type of fishing. So you're, you're casting into basically like the hydro pockets. We're casting behind all these big boulders. The water's going that way. We're casting and bringing the fly in towards uh, up current, upstream. Mm -hmm. So we're using a sinking line, and that's what you recommend? Absolutely. We uh, usually recommend anywhere from a 200 uh, all the way to a 350 grain uh, shooting tip. Okay. Um, I actually use full trolling line uh, to get a nice even sinking on it. This but, is, uh, I'm using a 300 grain yeah. sink line right now. And that's a really good grain. It's going to treat you well in this kind of current. If you get into the slower current, you can just slow your presentation down or speed it up. It's a really well, general purpose line kind of stuff. If you're going to be targeting the trout the most, then uh, anywhere, the six weight rods are great for it. Where they're a little smaller, it'll give you a little bit more action, a little bit more fight in the play in it. Also a little bit more feel where they take a lot softer than most fish do. Yeah, the six weight's more of a sensitive. Exactly. Um, sensitive rod for the, the softer taking brook trout. Exactly, and if you're getting into salmon and pike, and that's what you're going to be aiming for, then yeah, you're probably going to push up to a seven or an eight weight rod so you can handle those fish a little bit more effectively. Perfect, and I'm using an eight weight right now. Which is good, because we're going to get down to the back of this pool where we see a lot of salmon. And uh, heaven forbid you should hook into a 10 or 12 pound salmon on a six weight rod. Oh my goodness, that's yeah. going to be a racket. So Kira was explaining to me that the best way to strip in for these trout and the landlock is stripping to your hip. And really that's just been working tremendously here. So just enough and you just reach out to your hip. 
I was doing shorter strips, it doesn't work. He says, strip to your hip, and that's exactly the motion that creates uh, the trout to go after the fly. It's just perfect animation for the fly. So I'm simply stripping down to my hip. I also like to call it putting on the seatbelt. Click, click, <laughs> and it's really something to remember. And I think it's just perfect for these trout. Fish. 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 Excellent. <laughs> it's a trout. Very nice. Excellent. Very nice. On the white woolly bugger. On the old killer white woolly bugger. The catch and release or white woolly bugger. We got to change the name of that. So it's really important to not play them out too much because when we do release these fish, you know, there's pike in this water. So yep. you don't want to have them too tired that they can't get away from a predator. Especially in this water here where we are in a little bit of slack water, there's a good chance there's a pike sitting around here somewhere. Awesome. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. Oh, what a beautiful, beautiful fish. Beautiful fish. Big fall colors. I just can't be happier. I'm going to let this guy go so he's not detained anymore. It's been an absolute honor. River Keep Lodge, brook trout, right there. You go, sweetheart. I'll let him swim off on his own. <laughs> yes. Excellent. Way to go. Yes. Man. Let's go get another way. one. Yeah, let's go get another one. That was awesome. Awesome. A selection of streamers that worked well at River Keep are black woolly buggers and white woolly buggers, and a specialty fly called the nutcracker. Bring your box of trout dry flies with you, but these patterns work especially well. The Goddard caddis, brown bombers, and the rat faced McDougal. Have these dry flies in sizes 10 through 14. It's pretty windy, and a lot of times when you're trying to cast uh, with a, a windy condition, tailing loops can occur. And what comes with tailing loops? Wind knots. Here's going to demonstrate when you get a wind knot in your line, in your in your leader, how weak it actually makes your line. Go ahead, here. As you can see, I'm just taking it right off the reel here, nice and tight. I'm pulling that pretty hard. You get one wind knot in there. And all of a sudden, you're able to pull it apart. So see, some people say, oh, well, it's just one wind knot. That one wind knot is your 15-pound salmon going down river. Yep. Setups that were used on this episode for dry flies is a floating line to a 9-foot tapered leader to a 4X tippet and then a dry fly. For streamers, a full sinking line was used to a 4-foot monofilament 10-pound leader and then the streamer. The use of a full sinking line keeps the fly in the feeding zone longer. I was having such a great time and I wanted to share the wealth with my guide, so I invited him to fish with me. Kier was very reluctant as he stated his job was to guide and not fish. So after much encouraging, Kier agreed to wet a line. He then put on a clinic on how to catch a salmon. How powerful they are. Wow. He'll just swim and swim and swim. He has no intentions of coming to me, that's for sure. <laughs> He's like, I'll beach myself before I'm going in that net. I'll just keep the net nice and low. I'll bring him right onto it. As soon as he stops doing what he's doing. He doesn't have much left. There we go. Really pretty colors. Oh, he's girthy. It's a nice fall fish. This is what I mean with cold water. You'll see now, this fish is going to be chunky. Here we go. 
<laughs> awesome. Go. I'm not a professional netter. Well, you know, that's it. <laughs> Good Thanks. job. All right. What a beautiful fish. <laughs> Look at this fish. <laughs> Ready to go, too. Look at that. Another beautiful Wananish or landlocked salmon here at Riverkeep Lodge. Here, you've been an awesome guide. It's been a fantastic time here fishing for these gorgeous fish. And you got this one on the red and white nutcracker. Yep, we tied up a couple the other night. We figured we'd give them a shot, and they've been working really well, yep. so we're going to keep tying them. So not only do the guides get you on fish, they also tie up pretty awesome flies. Uh, I want to give a special thanks to Steve, owner and operator of Riverkeep Lodge, and Kier, my awesome guide. It's been a phenomenal time here in Labrador. And we're going to let this guy go. Thank you, sweetheart. And you let them go when they're ready. He's going to give me a little kickoff. There we go. From all of us here at the new Fly Fisher, we wish you tight lines and big fish. The new Fly Fisher has been made possible thanks to Newfoundland and Labrador Outfitters Association, Orvis Sporting Traditions, Scientific Anglers, Able Reels, Ross Reels, Superfly, fly fishing for everyone. To learn more about the new Fly Fisher, our locations, contests, news, and much more, Come visit and like us on Facebook.